All right, everybody. Today we're gonna to be talking about navigating safely through congested roads. Okay, so these are some key tips uh, for riding in heavy traffic. So the first tip is uh, having some vigilance and some awareness. Okay, so scanning your surroundings. We talk about 360 situational awareness all the time because the main thing here is that uh, we gotta watch out for hazards. They're not just in front of you. I know that's where we're traveling, but we have vehicles to the side to side. So we can get sideswiped. We can have these open lane patterns. We're in emerging areas, you know, on the interstates or even just, you know, going into a right turn lane and somebody wants to switch over real quickly. It's very important that we're paying attention to that. Also, when it comes to intersections, somebody running into the back of us, we've got to be very careful with that. And that how we handle that is, is the plan method. We position for safety. We get off to the sides. But what I like to do is uh, have a system in place where I'm checking my mirrors. And I do this in a car too. So think about it, if you're in a car, you're also on your motorcycle, you just start off on the right. For me, I start off on the right, it's very easy. Right mirror, I have my dash, look forward, left mirror, and then I look forward. And every now and then I'll do a quick head check to make sure there's nobody in my blind spots. But I'm constantly going mirror, dash, forward, mirror, forward, and then doing some side to side. I'm doing that every about 15, 20 seconds, but it's gonna give me an idea, or it could be even quicker, but it gives me an idea so that if I do need to swerve, I already checked about five seconds ago and there was nobody. So I could swerve if I need to, or I could do a quick head check and swerve. But the main thing here is having that 360 degree field of awareness. So you have to watch out for signs of movement. So we're talking about uh, these open lane patterns, people wanting to merge in front of us. If you see the tire start to rotate, if you start seeing inside of the vehicle on there, if we're at an intersection, somebody's wanting to pull out in front of you, uh, you start seeing the, the, the tire starting to rotate. So any movement is very important. When it comes to assessing relevant threats, movement is the thing that will get you. Okay. It's very easy to dodge things that are stationary. Uh, you want to utilize your peripheral vision. So we talk about focal vision all the time. So the focal vision is basically just right in there in the middle. Look at my eyeballs. You can kind of see that. But everything else, if you're just staring at my eyeball, it gets a little bit blurry. But that's not a big deal because if you're staring at my eyeball, you can still see the colors off to the bottom right of your screen, right? Yeah, and that's part of it. Utilize your peripheral vision. So if you're looking forward, you're scanning constantly for these hazards but then there's like some discoloration in the road. You can see that real quickly, focal vision, not a big deal, look back up. Or look down, focal vision, it's a tar snake or it's a hub or, or some road surface hazard, then swerve out of the way. Uh, safe distance maintenance, okay, so ensuring ample reaction time. We talk about space cushions, we talk about total stopping distance, we talk about all that stuff. Mainly, you wanna have a nice little buffer zone around you. So minimum two gap, or I'm sorry, minimum two second gap. So what we could do there is that if a car in front of you passes a stop, or not stop sign, geez, that'd be, bad, that'd be bad, huh? Passes a telephone pole, passes a mailbox, whatever it is, count one motorcycle, two motorcycle. And then if you pass it, hey, that's two second. Okay, that's a two second gap. I like to have about a four second gap, but if I'm gonna do a two second gap, I'm gonna make sure I'm off to the side so I have good escape paths and a good line of sight. So make sure you do that, okay? So increase the gap uh, in really challenging conditions. That includes, you know, rain, that includes snow, inclement weather, just bad roads. Um, even if it's just like a bunch of traffic, go ahead and increase it. It's perfectly, it's perfectly fine to increase that. Somebody might wanna take it, and that's perfectly fine, let them in. But then you roll up the throttle and you allow that gap to increase too. So handling tailgaters. Uh, this one is going to be a little bit difficult because they're obviously on your behind. Um, instead of like speeding up to go faster because that puts you in a, in a worse spot, especially if there's corners coming up and intersections and you need to slow it down, or if there's cops around, you get a ticket, uh, just move over uh, and let them in. And if it's a single lane road, just go off from the shoulder or take the first uh, turn into something. And then when they pass, get back on, do a nice little U-turn and get back on the road. Mirror usage, we just talked about that, but the main thing here is that we have to constantly use them and we have to make sure that they're in good working order, okay? So we have to be very careful of our blind spots. So adjusting the mirrors properly, how do you do that? When you first get on the bike, um, and before you take off, you sit down and you adjust the mirror so they're at least looking past your shoulders. You don't want them looking at your chest, you don't want them looking crazy to the sides. You wanna look them, want them looking behind you. That's why I like those rabbit ear mirrors so they look right behind me. So make sure that they're, uh, they're in working order, make sure that they're actually adjusted before you take off because it's gonna suck a little bit when you're actually riding and you're having to adjust them, okay? Check your blind spots. So just like I said, I like to start off on the right, center, uh, dash, look forward, left. Um, if you wanna add in a head check, mirror, dash, forward, mirror, head check, and then back, and then you start that process again. It's always good to do a head check. Just do a quick little look over the mirror, quick little look over, the, uh, I'm sorry, your shoulder, and use your peripheral vision 
as best you can to see if there's an object there. And if there is an object, you can do a double take if you want. Okay, so using your turn signals consistently. Okay, this is something where um, you're allowing the other people know what you're doing. You're indicating what you're supposed to be doing. And so this way they can have an understanding. And we want people to do that for us. We should start doing it for them. I like to use it about four seconds before the turn. So back to that two second uh, gap, I like to make that adjustment and do four seconds. So it's like one motorcycle, two motorcycle, three motorcycle, four motorcycle. Hey, I'm perfect on the turn. That just comes with practice. But utilize your turn signals. Make sure you turn them off uh, when you're done, okay? Filtering through traffic, okay? Filtering through traffic is something that not a lot of people are gonna have access to in the United States, but this is something that's more like international. But in Arizona, they did pass a law that we can actually lane filter. And lane filtering is uh, basically, it's not lane splitting. I keep hearing that. I already know that. I just kind of use them interchangeably sometimes and I need to start not doing that. But lane filtering is when traffic is stopped. But you want to be uh, very cautious. So what's happening here is that we're losing our escape paths to the left and to the right. And we can only really uh, do emergency braking or emergency acceleration. Uh, we tend to see a lot of people wanting to turn in front of us and we're going to talk about that. But be very assertive. So be not necessarily aggressive, because aggressive involves you actually trying to almost take something from somebody, but be an assertive as saying, this is where I'm at. Focus on me, I'm here. And what you're doing with that is that you're slowing it down because it's harder to see people when they're going super fast. So if you're kind of going slow, you're going 10 miles an hour over the speed of a stopped vehicle, so you should be only going 10 miles an hour in Arizona. You're allowing people to see, hey, this is where they're at because they're not having to do anything. They're stopped and they see you moving. So be assertive, take your spots, get back in the lane if you need to. But also anticipate these turning vehicles. So if there's an open lane pattern or somebody that's actually in front of you and that you see like a gap, they might take that gap. They might want to get in there because it might be moving a little bit faster. So anticipate that. Slow it down a little bit. You shouldn't be going super fast anyways. Cover those brakes this whole time. It's an orange stage situation and uh, get prepped and ready for them to do that. And if they swer swerve in that lane right in front of you, hopefully you have enough uh, total stopping distance. You're not going super fast, so you can apply progressive braking. And if not, you're gonna have to make a massive swerve, which is doable, we've seen it, but anticipate it, and that's part of it, okay? Perception, reaction, and whatever it is that you're doing. So if you can perceive it ahead of time and react quicker, it's better than not perceiving it until the last second, and then you finally react and crash. But uh, with that said, uh, these are some key tips for riding in heavy traffic, and I hope you guys ride safe.